A reading from Stone Dust by Lenore Thomas Strauss. Each day I take the hammer and the point, but the granite is still itself, and the carver is still separated, searching in its hardness, reaching to be one with what is hidden. Its shape has not been touched. Some days only tiny fragments are worried from its mass. Other days, over and over, the sharp ring of hammer on pitching tool slowly duels to a low and muffled moan as a piece separates, shivering, and falls free. There seems no pattern to the way it breaks. Nameless one, how are you found? Nameless one, how are you found? These words rising unsummoned to mind surface, tumbled out, demand their shaping on this paper. They surge to speak to that awesome growth, that growth cuts away, not a reflection of a posture to be admired and modified, not the best profile of the spirit complexly double imaged in the shallow mirror, but a harsh forming of the anguish that is the true condition. So in my heart, I heft their weight and shape this knowing. I am Shiloh Sophia here for a Red Thread Cafe with my dear friend, Grace. And we are here to talk about a voyage and a lineage. This reading is from a book. We have two of her books here that was created by Lenore Thomas Strauss, an artist who began in the 20s and 30s and continued her work under the Roosevelt administration's New Deal. The books are illustrated, written, and photographed, and the first few printings were created and printed by the artist herself. And Grace is here not only because she is a dear sister from Denmark and my Nordic sister from the North, but because she carries a part of this lineage. So I've invited her here to have a Red Thread Cafe with all of you so that we could hear the voyage to the Tender Stone. Welcome, Grace. Thank you, Shiloh. We, <clears throat> we feel so excited about this. We talk about it like children, right? About what is it that has called us to this togetherness? Yeah. And where did it come from? And what is the call? And so I'd love for you to speak to us first about just what called you to the work of intentional creativity and how it's connected with the North and your own lineage. Yeah. Well, um, I've always been a a woman of the North. Um, It's in my blood. I, I love the coolness. I love the wind. I love the clarity. I love the darkness. I love the light. Um, also, I, I'm a nature person, but along with this comes this natural urge to just express it, mm. express it naturally, you know, how can I share this beauty, how can I be with it, um, and I remember um, when I first came across one of your paintings, I was actually searching for the image of the goddess of the north. <laughs> and I was not looking for the usual ones. I yeah. was not looking for Freya and all the other beautiful deities, but I was looking for, like, what is the mother of the north? Mm. And one of your images sort of <gasps> stopped me, and I had to find out who, who created this. <laughs> um, and from there on... When I came across your work, it was only once or twice a year. It was like my heart started longing. Mm. And at that time, I had actively uh, joined circle with a lot of other very beautiful women of the North, 
from mm. Iceland, from Norway, from Sweden, from Denmark. And we had started to remember the ancient ways mm. of being with nature. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it was so natural to, to sort of, I don't know, it was like two streams that became one. Yeah. Two opposites that became one. And I remember the first time that we connected both through email and also on the phone. And um, she's a graduate of the Color of Women Intentional Creativity Method. And you're supposed to say um, in your application, who sent you or how did you hear about it? <laughs> and she wrote that Sue Sellers had sent her. And I thought, did she know Sue? Speaking of which, we are here in front of a painting by Sue Hoya Sellers called Eve's Orchard, which actually belongs to the author Alice Walker, and it's on loan here. And so we decided to have our cafe in front of um, the great, great mother. And when we began to dialogue, because I also have um, heritage from the north, from Sweden and Finland and a little bit of Danish, and we and and Norwegian, so it was all in there when we were speaking. We realized that she would be the first person to come into the training from the north, and we both felt like there was something there. And it was only it wasn't too long after that we began to make the connections that Sue's teacher Lenore is from Norway, and I think we did talk about it on the on the first call, like that that the Norway connection. And so we felt like there was a larger conversation that was taking place that we were a part of a dialogue, an ancestral dialogue of a returning, yes. which is an interesting part of this other book, The Tenderstone, about a return to honoring ancestry. And in our own way, we're doing that and then also bringing the conversation of the voyage forward. So we thought we would include you in our process. And I thought we could hold the thread, the thread of connection, and include all of you who feel like being included, who have studied intentional creativity with us or you're new to it, that intentional creativity simply means to, uh, to bring mindfulness to whatever you create. And it is a kind of a consciousness in the opening reading that I shared with you about the, the words demanding to be put on the page and what's held inside of the stone and the carver still being separate and the journey of one with their creation and that relationship, that relationship between the creator and the created, the process is what was given to Sue Sellers, my master teacher from Lenore. Lenore was her actual guardian, legal guardian, and taught her the tools of woodworking, stone sculpting, illustration, text, painting, and then she passed as many of those onto me as she could. So we want to include those of you who want to be included in the red thread. The red thread is that sign of connection that has a sense of knowing with it that says that if you're supposed to be connected, you are working your way towards that connection. And so Grace is going to do a reading from the tender stone and then speak to us about her call to the tender stone. Yes. But stone... Stone is myself. Mm. To this I have always returned, to rock, to water. I came to know that the sea is the solvent. The sea is the vast point of focus. That can bring two images into one. Beautiful. Yeah. And we, um, after our, our first real encounters over, over the cosmos, Jonathan and I actually felt called to go to Denmark to be with Grace and her family and to teach together. And then things really started firing. Um, but something really exciting has occurred that we feel like we're a part of. And that this lineage that we're practicing that was passed from Lenore to Sue 
to me and now to thousands and thousands and thousands of people is so much more than a concept, Mm -hmm. but it is a kind of a, a philosophy and there is energy and essence to it that called you. So tell us about your voyage. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, the thing was when I was called to, to you and to intentional creativity, it was, it was like two different forces. Mm. And I was like, why, why will I study with the lady in California, <laughs> even though I have traveled the world? Because at that exact time, I had been working very consciously for a few years with retrieving the wisdom of the North. And I remember when, when you said in, in our interview, our first conversation, but don't you know that it, it sprang from Scandinavia? <laughs> and that was the thing, like, of course I'm being led to find, to find the lineage where it is. And I decided at that moment that as soon as I, I was called, I would, I would go there to actually walk in the footsteps of Lenore. And um, when we decide things in our life, we know we have to do it. <laughs> but sometimes it's not in an hour or tomorrow. It's when everything's <laughs> <laughs> everything flows together and becomes one. So it took me a few years and I had to graduate and so on. <laughs> but finally, I was, I was ready to go to the northern part of, of, Luf- of Norway, which is called Lofoten. And these are islands that Lenore portrayed like this. It's rocks coming out of the ocean. Mm. Um, And even though I could purchase the ticket, I had put aside time, I couldn't get access. And, And by that I mean I couldn't get the right, you know ferry to go with, to match with the plane to it just it didn't work. And I remember that but this is the lineage that I have been welcomed into. Why, why can't I just go? <laughs> and and I, it's not, even though it's in Scandinavia, it's not close. It's, it's a not, journey. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a 12-hour journey to go from Copenhagen. You should think things are easy. But this is really a, a, a sacred place. Um, and finally, I remember that, that you were actually in the UN sharing your red thread uh, ceremony. And somehow... An opening occurred because at the same day I was able to book my tickets and and just be ready to go. So the thing is, I had planned to arrive and then go at the full moon and visit the tender stone uh, that Lenore gave to the Lofoten Islands, which is uh, the place of her ancestors. And... On the following morning, I woke up and the calling in my heart was so immense that I simply just had to sort of jump out of my my little room I had rented and and go pick up a rental car. And it was very strange because, you know, I planned the flow and didn't really think about it. So here I am driving two hours in rugged rugged area and and it's not easy to, to, to come from one point to the other. And finally, I, I text Shiloh and I say, I don't know what's happening, <laughs> but, uh, but you need to know that I'm traveling in our lineage footsteps. And it was kind of a surprise <laughs> because she kept part of this a surprise for me. I knew she was making the voyage, but I didn't know exactly when. And I was just blown away that this was happening. Exactly. So here I am in front of the, the tender stone. And it's an evening, and the sun is setting. And as I am a communicator with nature, I'm always very sub- observant to how is nature, you know, how, how is it? And driving towards her, I see the, the, the little silhouette, and I see the oceans and the mountains, and I, of course, see a rainbow, <laughs> which is one of my, yay, you know, <laughs> there is color welcoming. Um and the thing is, I have, I have traveled to a lot of places around the world visiting divine spaces and often looking for the mother, mm. you know, churches, nature points. And when I came to this very, very beautiful stone, 
53 years after Lenore donated her to the Lofoten Islands, to the, to the land of her ancestors. I'm there in front of her, and touching it with my hands was like, it was like touching everything that you've taught me. Mm. It was like, it was like she could have been a goddess, and she's a stone having been out there in the middle of nowhere in 53 years. So it was like, so ordinary in the one hand, and on the other hand, it was like divine magic. And I could have stayed with her for two weeks. And also, the, the, I'm a true knower and believer that when Lenore sculpted her with the love for her grandmother and her ancestors and everything that she had been given, her soul and her essence is still in the tender stone. So I could have hugged Lenore right there because I could, I could feel her mm. emanating all this wisdom. And one of the things that I carry in, in, in my other lineage is, is the respect of the sacred reciprocity, meaning that I would always come to her and honor her and give my love and my blessing. And then I am able to receive everything that's there. So this meeting was, mm. it was such a blessing. Um, yeah. Mm. Want me to continue? Sure. Yeah. I love hearing about it. I love this sense of in the chaos and busyness of life and family and work that you felt the desire and acted on it to go and that you also brought the prayers of our community of intentional creativity with you. And it's a, I, I, it's hard for me to say this without crying, but I used to ask too, like, if you could tell Lenore anything, what would you tell her? It was like my favorite thing to ask. And she said, I just want her to know I'm doing my work. Yeah. And by Grace going there, it was like some loop of energy was completed somehow that then opened something else. But the sense of not only, yes, Sue did her work, but we are doing the work and we have come home to the ancestral place to say, we're doing the work. We've carried it on. Your message did not go unheard. Yeah. And her creating, the way that she was creating at the time that she was creating it, was really revolutionary. People from the beginning of time have made images of the feminine. For, you know, some say 500,000, some say 250,000 years. People have created images of the Divine Mother in clay and stone. And in fact, if it wasn't for the clay and stone, uh, we wouldn't even know that there was a lineage of the matriarchy um, because so much of the text has been removed and taken out. And this is why you wouldn't know about the goddesses of the North, right? Because it's been so written out. Without the images, we would not know. And so I think of this goddess image of the tender stone, also called the fisherman's wife looking out to sea, as um, this image of the feminine that was created, that if someone from another dimension were to see it, would say, oh, this is, this is the feminine that these people honored, and she's carrying a simple flower, this offering of a flower. And I think about how uh, Eleanor Roosevelt invited Lenore to create under the New Deal. They brought a lot of artists in. They could create whatever they wanted, and Lenore chose to create the um, preamble to the Constitution in in stone, mm. <laughs> like really unbelievable, and to image things like the common defense in human beings, figures, forms, and to bring this concept of a people, of a struggle, of justice, of possibility, of hope, 
the farmers across from the businessmen and the military men across from the peacekeepers and the families across from the guy at the desk. Mm. You know, these are very literal interpretations um, that are in Greenbelt, Maryland, where Sue and Lenore were together. And that concept of bringing story and mindfulness into written in stone, that's a part of what our work is about with intentional creativity is to bring mindfulness to whatever you do and then believe that that carries the essence. That's what Lenore taught Sue and what Sue taught me and what I teach the women that I work with. And so when you were there, um, you were encouraged to stay very strongly, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you put it lightly. Yeah. Well, the thing was, I had my plans, and... <laughs> The Lofoten Islands and the ancestral lines, they had their plans. <laughs> I had planned to come the following day because it was a full moon and I thought that would be a beautiful ceremony. But okay, I'd been there, I honored her, I stayed. And I thought, okay, I'll take my car and I'll drive home and then I'll come tomorrow. And I stayed actually until two o'clock at night because it is the midnight sun and I wanted to sort of be in that immense light to celebrate. So driving back, and, and you have to imagine these are rocks coming out of the ocean. So when you drive from A to B, you, you have to drive kilometer after or mile after a mile to get from A to B. So I'm trying to go from one island where the tender stone is to sort of the little next island. And there in front of me is the whole cliff, the whole side of the mountain or the rock has fallen and crushed the road. <laughs> and, and it's like unbelievable. Why? And there's this little man in his orange, you know, the sweater or whatever it's called, saying, you know, a vest, saying, well, a 25-ton rock fell on the road and crushed it. So you can pass, and that's the only road. There's no more roads. So maybe you can come tomorrow morning. We'll see what happens. And that kept on going for two full days. Every time I tried to approach the road, I couldn't go back. And I couldn't, I couldn't go anywhere. So I simply had to park my car somewhere and sleep because and find some water, you know, close to a waterfall. It's all clean there. And the other thing that I actually did was I managed to get this book. You know, I bought it before I left, but I didn't want to open the book before I, I, I came to the Lofoten. I, want, I wanted to be in her footsteps. So I would simply open the book and read on, and then During I, the whole journey. Yeah, and then I would go to the place that you told me about. So, can you imagine? <laughs> I'm there, it's been 53 years, I'm honoring lineage, and everything alive is talking to me, telling me what to do. And I could have been side by side with Lenore, because she spoke from here, and she spoke through nature. Mm. Um, now I've got you here. You're not leaving yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So the following day, I, of course, went there. And I asked, you know, I'm a woman. And I know that I can't do anything or haven't been able to do anything if it hadn't been for my ancestors. The love of my ancestors, all of those who walked before me, and everything I've been given from our meeting, from our sharing, is so enriching, and it's like I don't see myself if I can't see your light, and vice versa. So it's so important that, that we share. An intentional creativity released so many stories and pains and I would say shadows from my heart that I longed to release and I couldn't. Mm. 
mm. until, even though I, I, I see myself as a very, I've been walking my path, but still, without this, I, I couldn't have. So it was, it's like bringing, you've been a spirit woman your whole life, yeah. but bringing it into form through creating. Yes. Yeah. In this specific way. Yeah. And most important, probably, the mm. feeling of the oneness yeah. is so important. Yeah. So the first time I came, the first evening I came to the tender stone, here I am in, in front of, 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 it could be Mary, it could be the Madonna. She, she was so beautiful. And she's out there in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, oh my God, isn't she lonely? You know, how can a stone be lonely? But I had this, are you lonely? Mm. And in a way, when I see her, she's facing the ocean, as you, as you will see, and, and she has the mountains. She's so content because she's mm. holding the love from that lineage, from our lineage. And in the same time, she's like, I'm like, oh, we need to remember her. Mm. We, we, we need to remember this purity and creativity and that we are the result of the love of thousands. Yeah. We are. Yeah. So the second day I asked her if I could do a red thread session with her, the statue, the, the figure, and she said yes. The first day, no, but the second day I was able to sort of do the, the very beautiful ritual. And I felt that her message to me that I would like to offer for everybody is when, you, when we are born, we are born with an urge to celebrate our lives, mm -hmm. to, to love our lives, to love nature, to love beauty. And, and we want to celebrate it by creating. It doesn't matter what it is, but we, we are also natural creatives. And it's like, that part is the part that we have forgotten or has been taken away from us or so many in so many lives in such a long time mm -hmm. we have been taught that the natural urge to create is a waste of time right. and actually it's the journey home <laughs> So that was the, the, the biggest thing, mm. that the, the gift that I left with mm. was do remember that it's a birthright, it's a birth joy, mm. and, and cr celebrating and creating is the best way to, to share who you are. Mm. What a beautiful message to receive. <laughs> and I, I fully agree. I feel like creativity is so much more than... As well, it has very little to do with talent. Talented people can also be creative, but it isn't about being an artist or being talented. Creativity is our natural right. We all have it. So we always used to say we all have the same amount of creativity. It's just really how we use it and express it. And the the time that intentional creativity came to life, I was in my twenties and I was sculpting in Sue's studio as wedging clay, and I. I was tired of wedging clay. We'd been making it, and I didn't want to do it anymore. And I said, can't we just get clay at the store like the other families? I was kind of joking, but kind of serious. And she said, what do you care about seeing changed and healed in the world? And I said, I would love to see the end of suffering and violence against women and children contribute to that. And she said, put that into your clay. And she said, the energy you're putting into it will impact you and it will impact the women you're paying for in real time. Believe it. And my whole being came into being. Like that was my moment where I came into my identity and I woke up to whatever degree I was awake in that moment. Everything that was available to me to be awake to in that moment was came. Mm -hmm. And it was this thought of how we had impact on form and the impact that the form had on us, which I also learned from my mom, Karen McLeod, and Sue, and my mom, you know, raised me with these thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to bring you this message of creativity along the red thread and share the importance of listening to the voyage as it calls you forward. And you may not know why 
you feel called to something. You may not know why this seems like the most important thing in the world and you have to get on a boat and go to a remote (laughs) island uh, and um, be stopped by a giant rock so that you could listen to the messages. So we um, thank you so much for tuning in for a little Red Thread Cafe. Oh, and do you have a closing reading for us? I would love to. Okay, great. Thank you so much for being here and for listening to the story. Rock is eroded by water. Mountain is tenderly covered by cloud. Sea force is channeled by rock. There is no victor. There is no vanished, vanquished, 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 vanquished. Yes, yes. Eternal tension, but eternal unity. The rock is the sea, is myself, said Lenore. And again, the irresistible force of spring breaking through the immovable weight of winter. There too is unbearable tension. Yet it is all one Mm. and I need not struggle Mm. Mm. thank you Grace for coming to grace us with your presence thank you everyone if I can add one thing yes I was invited into this lineage and this lineage is waiting for us it's waiting for us all Mm. so thank you Shiloh thank you everyone thank you bless you